we've got a little disco going on from DJ Right Click to start the Multiple Pathways of Recovery webinar, whatever this thing is. What are we doing here, Amy? It's just a little digital discussion, Phil. We're not doing any boogieing. We're not doing any boogie fevering. We can boogie. Let's get everybody in a good mood. It's a digital discussion. <laughs> I like that idea about a digital discussion. DD for short. DD. So who can wave hi? Richie, can you wave hi? Abby, what about you, Abby? Look Jesse, at my man. Faces, I see. Look at that. He's in the space age Helios environment. Beverly, what's going on? Steve, what's going on? Robin, Robin, I see you. People in the Manchester Recovery Community Center. Yeah, Nikki, what's happening? Are you doing good? Yeah, Rita, how are you? Hi, Rita. Woohoo! Miss Stacy. You look a little short in that camera angle. <laughs> I like that angle. Oh, I don't know. Look at her little pumpkin though next did to she, her. She's did she just little... give me did she just give me the thumbs up? I hope that was a thumb. Uh, <laughs> Berlinda, what's up? Oh, there you go. Look at all these people we have. I know. So you tell me when you want me to start. Yeah, I mean let's like let's just get right into it, Phil. I don't know, but I really like that song. That was it a brings good me, it, it brings me back to all those times I can't dance. <laughs> hey, do you guys I'm know, good. I got to tell you, last night I had a nightmare. It was an incredible nightmare. I saw Gloria Gaynor herself at the <laughs> foot of my bed. At first I was afraid. I was petrified. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I gotta stop, right? I just gotta stop, Amy. You're telling no, me to stop. I encourage it, but it's okay. That that was a good one to like mic drop on, I think. Well, you know, my wife Sandy, Sandy V, who's in the house, she is really mad at you, Amy. Oh no. <laughs> because this all started when you gave me the dad jokes champion t-shirt i did I <laughs> now i've now i've had to live <laughs> up to that ever since i've been doing you know i am a dad joke champion so i have to behave like one i do like jesse's um multiple pathways of comedy maybe we do have a little dad joke recovery track at the next one what do you say who knows <laughs> um so, okay, well, I can't be serious at times, but I do like to have my fun. I do like to, um, I enjoy life. I didn't get sober to be miserable, right? So my name is Phil DJ Right Click Valentine. Right Click was my trail name when I hiked the Appalachian Trail in 2015. But more importantly, I have been a person in recovery established December 28th, 1987. So I'm actually in my 34th year of personal recovery. And I am now celebrating more than, well, January will be 23 years. Michael Jordan, two, three, 23 years at the Connecticut Community for Addiction Recovery. And I've been the executive director since 2004. And so, uh, Amy, do you wanna say, introduce yourself and say hi? Yes. Hi. Welcome, everybody. My name is Amy Albanese, and I am the special events manager here at CCAR. And um, I'm an ally, but I have been, I just actually celebrated my two-year anniversary here at CCAR just a couple weeks ago. So um, love the organization, love, you know, what we do here, and super excited about this webinar in particular because, you um, you know, we have this amazing conference coming up and, you know, kind of just wanted to fill everybody in on what's going on. And, um, you know, like I said, we'll just have a little digital discussion, if you will. Um, you know, if you want to kind of take it away, Phil, and do your thing. 
So I think it's appropriate to always, hey, Melissa's in the house. Melissa M2300076666 McGee, whatever, whoever she is. I don't know who that is, but I think it's appropriate to start any conversation when we talk about multiple pathways uh, with a quote from William White that he established very early on. I probably first met Bill around, uh, I would say, 1999, 2000, when I was, CCAR was a recovery community services program um, grantee, and he used to get invited at all the national conferences, so I got to hear William White speak. How many people know who I'm talking about? Give me a show of hands, Bill White, uh, williamwhitepapers.com is where you can get all this stuff, but his simple quote was, there are multiple pathways of addiction recovery and all are cause for celebration. And, and I just thought that took so much sting out of people's um, need to defend a, a particular pathway um, because they're all causes for celebration. And we'll hopefully dive into that a little bit. Um, we believed in multiple pathways and I have to go back to one of my most early um, training sessions, probably in my first year or two of working at CCAR as an associate director. And we developed this training called uh, Religion in 12 Steps, Adversaries, Strangers, or Friends. And when we were facilitating this, we had two old white guys, you know, back at the time, I thought they had well, they had decades of recovery, 20, 25 years of recovery. And we had two black women who also said they had 20 to 25 years of recovery. Um, and they operated a mission or a ministry out of their church, helped homeless, helped people get into recovery, helped the still sick and suffering, um, had light in their eyes. They were just on fire for God and fire for recovery. And the two men from Alcoholics Anonymous told these two black women that they were not really in recovery because they did not attend meetings. Mm. And I got to facilitate that conversation. And so they kept it cordial and everybody walked out okay. But what it did for me as a facilitator really opened my eyes in a very spiritual sense that people maintain recovery in a variety of ways. And I became very open to the possibility that my way of 12 step recovery, ba re recovery abstinence space might not necessarily be the only way to recover because I saw it, I saw living proof. And then I've told you I've been here for almost 23 years. I can't tell you how many thousands of examples of people I've seen that maintain and support their recovery through pathways far different than mine. And they're thriving in life. And that indeed is a cause for celebration. Would you agree? I like well, that, thumbs I'm up. Um, so, so much so that so some of you are familiar with CCAR's foundational principles. And it occurred to me when I first started uh, as in my executive director leadership role that we had a, a lot of, like a few beliefs that we all believed in, but had never been written down. So I called those foundational principles. And we added recovery first uh, several years ago now but the, one of the very first ones was, um, you're in recovery if you say you are, but there are multiple pathways of recovery. And so we have always believed that institutionally and organizationally since almost our inception. And we really embrace whatever that may look like. We've heard over the years that sometimes um, some people have accused us of not believing in harm reduction. And that couldn't be farther from the truth because we've always supported 
harm reduction. We supported people on medication for their recovery. Um, it's, as long as the medication is prescribed, who are we to say that you're not supposed to be prescribed that? We would never say that to a people we coach or people that come in. So that's just kind of an overview of um, um, some of the pathways. And I have a lot of experts in this room <laughs> about multiple pathways. And we have a thing that Amy can bring up, but in the chat box, you know, I'm a, tra I'm a facilitator at heart. So I'm gonna ask you to do stuff. Um, put in the chat box, some things you would consider pathways of recovery that you have personal experience with and that, um, that you could highlight. And Amy, take this down. Let me just see what the okay. chat box is for now. Oh, and we'll, we'll go over this afterwards. Mm -hmm. But in the chat box, what are some pathways of recovery that you have personally can attest to that you have seen work? Is everybody clear um, on what I'm asking you to do? Clear, Clarice puts in already, I have seen fitness as a pathway to recovery, diet and exercise, MAT, smart recovery, floristry. Wow, Ooh. that's cool. Uh, AA, Phoenix, well, Bridey. Well, thank you, Rita. Spirituality, Richie says the hero's journey, art, acupuncture, medication assisted treatment, God, date night with my son, art, fitness, dog walking. I'm into the dog walking piece. Uh, service, volunteer work, uh, nutritional support, life skills training, NA, natural, 12 step, medication assisted recovery, refuge recovery, hiking, advocacy, mindfulness, 12 step, advocacy, meditation, all recovery format, smart recovery, pedicures and manicures. I love, love that it. one. <laughs> uh, parenting, connecting with nature. Uh, nobody put up like surf fishing. What's up with that? I mean, surf fishing is definitely a pathway to recovery without a doubt. Thank you, Deidre. I like that. Uh, yoga. Um, fishing. <laughs> yeah, so now we got a few fishing up there. Tai Chi. So did anybody, as these all scrolled through, I'm going to ask uh, if, does anybody want some more information on one of the pathways that they saw go by through here? Anybody? And raise your hand. You can either raise your hand so I might be able to see you or put it in the chat or raise your hand virtually. Uh, Richie, though, I'm going to ask you to unmute, unmute, talk about the hero's journey. What's that pathway? Okay, so hi, everybody. Introduce yourself, too. Who are you? I'm Richie, recovery coach for the Department of Corrections program. Here in Love Connecticut. Love it here at CCAR. Yep. Love my job. It's great. Um, so I actually just came across the actual name last night on a, um, from Jordan, P Jordan Peterson was talking about a hero's, the hero's journey. And it's basically where you, you, know, you pick a hero and you know, it's mostly spiritual. Um, ah. from what I understand so far, but it's the pathway that I've chosen. So it kind of fits in part with what I'm unfolding as my recovery grows each day. So it's a journey that I'm learning, but I wanted to share it because I'm kind of excited about it. Uh, yeah, I love that. Uh, Jesse, you know that you're facilitating here. I'm going to ask you to talk a little bit about what you know about refuge recovery, because sometimes people haven't heard about that. Sure. Refuge yeah. recovery is... Introduce Hi, my name is to... Jesse Heffernan. <laughs> mm -hmm. Coming to you live from Appleton, Wisconsin. Uh, person in long-term recovery. Refuge recovery is uh, based on Buddhist beliefs and principles. And so in Buddhism, and there's other types of Buddhist flavored recovery pathways as well, but refuge recovery stems specifically from the work of Noah Levine, author of several books, one of which is Against the Stream, uh, Dharma Punks. And so from there, he built the nonprofit and kind of this, this their own uh, way of navigating through um, an eightfold path of identifying ways and means to work on a person's recovery. And there's a workbook and there's groups and facilitation guides for that kind of a thing, but it's far more steeped in the 
Theravada Buddhist tradition than anything else. Excellent. Thank you. Deidre, you have your hand up. I did for, for a brief moment. Um, I just wanted to kind of like the, the theme that I was getting um, with all of the responses was the connection of everything invoked um, just some sort of passion. So I liked that. Um, it's just kind of like um, it, for my ex own experience, it's getting outside of myself and connecting with something um, that doesn't resonate with recovery itself or the addiction process. It's just something that's outside that I'm passionate about. I agree. Thank you for sharing that so much. Um, Amy has got a, 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 we have a, a, well, do I want to do the website thing next or what do you think? Why don't we just put it in the chat and like let people, you know, use it as okay. a resource? Is that a good idea? It is. So we okay. have one page on our ccar.us website that has some resources for multiple pathways. It's not a comprehensive list by any means, but we can point you to that. And I know we're having a discussion. So if you go to the chat function and if you click on it, you will see um, Amy Albanese is the host and she's near the top. And if you wanna ask a question, ask a question there, or you can put it in the general chat and we'll probably see it. But Amy's gonna start us off because she wanted to do this more as a, a question and answer format. And so she has a few questions she wants to ask me um we yeah. can also ask the entire group if they have anything they want to share so i'll respond and if you want to respond to the question as well uh please raise your hand uh, i for firmly believe that none of us is as smart as all of us so we like to hear from as many people as possible um and so fire yeah. away amy all Let's right hear the first one yeah so i mean you touched on it briefly um but I would love to know when you actually discovered the concept of multiple pathways. Wow, that is a great question. So we just recently did a Faces and Voices of Recovery, kind of an anniversary 20 year leadership summit. And I think it was really, we had discovered it somewhat in Connecticut but I'm sure a lot of you have this experience. Many of the people that were attracted to the movement came from a very strong 12 step background and many of the people were from 12 step. But as we started to, there were other 18 other grantees that received this federal grant. And when we got together, we started to discuss this idea of multiple pathways that people were were uh, getting um, into recovery through what we would say outside the 12 step world. And I was like, whoa. And I was probably then at the time, 10 to 12 years in recovery. And I had known that um, the abstinent and my program of recovery was Alcoholics Anonymous. And I was abstinent from alcohol and other any mind altering drugs. I believed in a higher power. Um, and that had worked for me. And if somebody told me you could do something else in those first 10, 12 years, I would have defended AA and basically thought anybody else was going to die. That they, you know, if you're, you were just destined to drink again and either kill yourself or kill somebody else or end up in jail or whatever. Um, I have since altered my position uh, a great deal on that. I think the thing I've also found in training the Recovery Coach Academy um, dozens and dozens and dozens of times is there's almost a common denominator and this is not tested in any science. This is like Phil's theory. <laughs> so take it for what it's worth. <laughs> but that at like 10 years, people's defense mechanism of their own pathway of recovery drops dramatically. That when you get into 12, 15, 20, 25, 30 years, we're much, we're pretty confident in the, in the way that we've recovered has worked for so long and that we're open to other suggestions. What I'm saying is another pathway is no longer a threat to me personally. 
And I used to take those other pathways as threats to my personal recovery. So a lot of you who've trained with me in the Recovery Coach Academy have heard me say this. And this is, I will say it this way. My pathway of recovery is rooted in 12 steps. It's also rooted in abstinence. It's also founded in a faith in a higher power. And for me, that higher power is my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And then I will ask the class two questions following that. I will say, um, if I believed everybody I work with as a recovery coach had to follow that pathway, how successful would I be? Oh. And a lot of people go, not too successful. You suck. You know, you'd be terrible. Don't do that. Or they might say, at least for a portion, you might be okay. And then I say the next follow-up question to that is, is knowing that that's my pathway, do you think I could be a successful recovery coach and support other pathways different than mine? And most people will go, oh yeah. So when we really talk about multiple pathways and being a recovery community organization that provides a lot of recovery coaching services, we have to be able to support other pathways of recovery. Make sense? Does anybody have anything they'd like to add uh, or answer the question? Um, when did you discover the concept of multiple pathways? Anybody at all? This is Ruth. I'm in Iowa. And when I discovered the multiple pathways was when I took a CCAR training. And I was amazed and awed and it was wonderful and awesome. But for me professionally, it was a little difficult because as someone who's studying to be a CADC, you know, that licensing bureau, all the licensing lingo and everything, it was still really made clear to me that there was one way to earn my credits. And that was to go through a very professional clinical based and that included the 12 steps. I said, can I get credit for work that I do in sober living facilities? Can I do get credit for work that I do in MAT programming? And the answer was always no, it's, it's our way or the highway. Mm -hmm. And that's what led me more to want to be a recovery coach and an ally because there are multiple ways to recover. And it's insane to think that there's only one professional way of, of acting. Right. Thank you, Ruth. Uh, Coach Mark, what's happening, Coach? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thanks for calling on me. I, uh, I'm a second generation AA. Mm -hmm. So I believe in uh, AA actually while I was still drinking because it worked for my father. I thought I'd start AA when I was 35 or had my first DWI and I didn't last that long. So I ended up doing, during, due to the wisdom of a judge who I'm eternally grateful for in a therapeutic community that didn't believe in 12 steps at all. So I get up there six, seven months sober in AA or NA, and we actually had a sneak meetings into the program. <laughs> we had clandestine AA and NA meetings in the treatment center. Mm -hmm. And it was very interesting because it helped me open up to the idea that people did get clean and sober in other ways. And uh, right off the bat, you know, therapists were talking about other alternatives to AA and NA. Uh, personally, to me, it's still AA and NA are my main path. Great. Thank, Thank you, you, Mark. Thank you, Mark. Uh, MRCC, who's over there? Who wants to unmute? Hi. Hi everyone. This is I'm Bill Bigelwet. Uh, hey, I do Bill. the vocational piece down here at uh, Cicara Manchester, and uh, I have 28 years in recovery, and uh, they all were here at the Pathfinders Building. Mm -hmm. 28 years ago, my first job was to clean ashtrays, and uh, now. Uh, after 26 years, uh, thank God that CCAR opened the Manchester Center because uh, I was struggling after 26 years with the, with the 12 step uh, process. Mm -hmm. 
And Sikh uh, Power was like a breath of fresh air to me. And uh, then I started discovering all the pathways. I said, what are they talking about? Pathways <laughs> of recovery. <laughs> and then I started thinking, then someone said to me, hobbies. And I said, well, that's great. Then bowling, I used to be a, a collegiate bowler and a, a semi-professional bowler. And I said, that's one of my pathways of recovery. Mm -hmm. And then I thought about what else. And, and Phil, you said that you liked the Appalachian Trail. I, I liked that trail as well, mm -hmm. uh, especially around uh, uh, in Vermont, around Killington. Yeah, tough and, stretch. Uh, there's a beautiful place there called uh, the Inn at Long Trail. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, they have a beautiful bar. Well, I don't go in the bar anymore. <laughs> but uh, it was a, a half of a tree, so uh -huh. and everything. And I was just like, I, was, I always had a fondness for wood because my parents always had plastic furniture. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, you know, I have an infinity towards wood. But, uh, you know, it, it just it was a breath. See, car was a breath of fresh air to me. And... Uh, Michael and Kathy have taught me so much and how to be benevolent and how to, how to approach people in different ways and get people to share with you. And uh, it's just been a wonderful experience the last Thank you. Little, thank you, Bill. We got a couple a more. Thank you, Bill. We got a couple more to share and then we'll go on to another question. So thank you so much, Bill. Uh, Perry, how are you? Good to see you. Yes, good to be seen, Bill. Um, yeah, um, this is great. You guys are doing this. And you, you um, reminded me of um, how important it is to have some at least foundational recovery. Mm -hmm. And um, having once been a therapist back in the 80s, and I got sober in the, in the 70s in prison, and how there was fewer multiple paths or you know, as far as organized ones. Right. And back then in the 70s, we, but my parents, um, somebody mentioned being second generational in recovery. I'm actually part of four generations in recovery. My son actually today has one year uh, again, again, but uh, he had 12 years at one time and he's 40, he's an AA baby. And um, um, where I'm kind of thought to share that might be helpful for people is the idea that what I have seen is I've sponsored a lot of guys. I've also had clients and some stick around in the rooms because AA is my mothership, but some don't and they find church. I've seen my parents do that and stop going to meetings and, you know, I can take their inventory and judge how the quality of their recovery, but that's really ultimately for them to, to say what that is. And so what I've learned is just to have an open mind as an old timer. And also that, again, I've had numbers. I got some sponsors that still stay in touch with me. And we used to ski together and do other activities. And um, they're not drinking or drugging. And they're fairly happy. And they were turned to me and to some other folks that uh, are their resources. Or, um, again, back to foundational. I'll last just say to that, that. I learned a long time ago, because I grew up in Alateen, you have a family of chance and you have a family of choice. And I have observed that in the recovery multiple pathways, there is, I believe pretty much all of them, there is an energy of connection, be a mm -hmm. sort of a, where it's safe to tell the truth and be your authentic mm -hmm. self. And whatever exactly. supports that, supports that. Mm -hmm. And so that's sort of my point of view. So thanks Thank for you, listening. Terry. One more, Steve. How are you? Hey, I'm doing well, Phil. How, how you doing? Good. Hey, hey, gang. My name is Steve Gaynor, and I'm a person in long-term recovery, also. And what that means to me has been almost 19 years since I found it necessary to do any mind move altering substances. And I'm a big advocate for recovery because you know recovery has afforded me so much, and I want everybody to have this opportunity to recover. And feel, and I found out about this pathway um, almost over 11 years ago mm -hmm. when I came affiliated with the Georgia Council on Substance Abuse. Mm -hmm. You know, because here at the Georgia Council on Substance Abuse, you know, we embrace multiple pathways, you know, because we realize that people get sick and become addicted in so many different ways. So it just really and truly just makes sense for them to have multiple, 
multiple pathways to access supported services and be able to direct their own pathway to recovery. You know, because recovery means different things for different people. So, you know, in whichever pathway you choose to recover, we are here to support it. You know, because um, <laughs> I was the one that put in the chat that pedicures and manicures, right? That does it for me. <laughs> You know, it really, <laughs> truly does it for Steve, you know, um, you know, prayer, meditation and pedicures and manicures, man, you know, and um, it works. It really, truly works for Steve. So, you know, right. we embraced it. Thanks, Phil. Thanks for letting me share, buddy. Oh, thank you. Good to hear from you. Um, so, Amy, what's the second question? And we'll get to some of the chat questions after we kind of go through this next one. I think it's important. Yeah, so, um, you know, we're talking about the multiple pathways and we have our multiple pathways recovery conference coming up and, you know, even I am curious kind of how that came about and, you know, what your, um, you know, what was the original intention behind, you know, hosting that conference and, um, you know, its origins. How many people here by a show of quick hands have attended a multiple pathways co recovery conference? I got Ruth and Coach Mark and Perry. So when we had, we wanted to convene people. We didn't want to say we had the, the, we've always, we've never really thought that we know it all. We don't, we don't know much of anything. We're just trying to convene people and recovery coaches were coming across a variety of multiple paths. Like what we put in the chat box earlier and we wanted to host a conference that featured this so that people could explore the different pathways out there. And if they weren't there, they could advocate for them, maybe even start them up in their area, but know more about them. And because coaches were asking for it, that was really how it came about. It wasn't any more complex than that. And the first one was held in Connecticut and then we bought the next two or three, I, I don't even remember, down to Punta Gorda because that's Bill White's backyard. And he's not traveling and he's not doing anything. He's very rare, even on video. But he said he would come in person. And what he found out, he, A, connected with his old buddy, Don Coyhis, many times. And the second thing was that he got to hear from people in recovery, which helped inform his blog writing that he's doing quote unquote in his retirement. So he's been a big fan and a big supporter and that's why we hold it in Punta Gorda. Any other thoughts or comments or questions about the conference? And Amy, if you just post up a post a quick uh, from our website maybe of the page from, our, for, from the conference and you guys can see what our agenda looks like and if you want to register or you know, push people to attend um, we have a low turnout so far, but that's understandable because of COVID. And maybe we hit the uh, uh, agenda piece so you can see, but we have sponsorship availability, we have speakers, all of that. And um, we try to, when we do the agenda piece, we like to talk a lot about um, some of the different pathways that are described. So like Don Coyas, has come every year and talked about white bison and well-briety, which is always fascinating. We have adventure recovery that comes from, um, Tim Walsh will come and talk about being outside and natural connections. Speakers from refuge recovery from other areas as well. Any questions or thoughts or about the multiple pathways of recovery conference you'd like to add here? You can raise I'm your gonna, hand or jump in. Yeah. I'm also going to um, post the website right in the chat box. If anybody has any questions, you can certainly go right there. Um, and I'll, you know, we'll talk a little bit more about what to expect um, at the actual conference later, but just as a resource, I'll put it in here. Great. Um, so one other, to, oh, go ahead, I want to just have a follow-up question because- yep. You touched on it a little bit, but I think, um, you know, I'm just curious about, um, you know, 
how the multiple path, um, pathways apply to recovery coaching. I know you like touched on it a little bit, but um, I think it's an important aspect. So, well, I know there's other seasoned trainers. So Ruth, you know, I'm going to call on you to ask you that question. <laughs> I have a couple of things on have a couple of things on my mind, Phil. Mm -hmm. First of all, um, I just want to say congratulations to CCAR uh, for the Multiple Pathways of Recovery Conference. It's a jewel in our annual crown and an absolute destination for all of us. Um, and you, the uh, every possible for, oh, absolutely, uh, Phil. Um, uh, so you know anything I can ever do to support you at any level. Uh, you know, sort of, I'm signed up ahead of time. You don't have to <laughs> check back with me, just volunteer me. <laughs> the second thing that I wanted to say was picking up on what you said about uh, Bill White um, reconnecting with Don Coyus at Multiple Pathways of Recovery uh, Conference. Um, I had a wonderful uh, conversation with uh, Don Coyus um, whenever our last in person was. Um, where he had been talking about generational trauma manifesting in addiction for a whole people. And, um, and I come from exactly that same scenario. Uh, the Irish people were devastated in the mid 19th century by our uh, famine, our great hunger. And indeed the, the face of American demographics were changed forever by it as well. The fallout from that has been tremendous appalling amounts of, of addiction uh, arising from that. So, you know, sort of these connections, I say that only to illustrate how incredibly significant these connections that we're all making at the Multiple Pathways of Recovery Conference, how significant these, uh, these connections are uh, to all of us individually as well as in our work. And uh, well, uh, well, Briety training um, has now reached us in New York State, um, and I'm absolutely thrilled that we have uh, welcomed our first Well Briety trainer into the ASAP NYCB trainer registry, and uh, approved the first Well Briety training uh, in support of professional certification in New York State. So, um, you know, sort of, Phil, your, your work with multiple pathways um, is far reaching. Your mm. work with this conference is far reaching. So um, in respect of you remember the, the actual, question? Uh, Amy's actual question. <laughs> yeah, yes. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you. For, for me, for <laughs> me, one of the core values of the CCAR philosophy is uh, the idea that there are two experts in the conversation. Mm -hmm. Any coaching conversation, there are two experts. You are the expert on your life, and I am the expert on mine. Mm -hmm. You are in recovery when you tell me you are, and I am in recovery when I say I am. That's a fundamental core principle of um, everything that we do. And acknowledging that there are multiple pathways of recovery is a no brainer. If I'm proceeding from that philosophical position that you are the expert on your own life and you embrace a pathway of recovery I've never heard of, I don't know anything about, or you embrace a pathway of recovery that you know, sort of I'm a bit dubious about, um, that's not the point here. The point here is that you've embraced it for your life and it's working for you. Mm -hmm. And what happens at the Multiple Pathways of Recovery Conference is that we all get to meet with and learn from and hear from um, individuals from all around the country who are embracing very different mm -hmm. pathways of recovery and it's working for them as individuals. And we get a chance to learn from that and to honor it. Well said. Wonderful. You, ought to, you ought to be a speaker or a facilitator, Ruth. Did anybody ever tell you, you that? You think? Yeah. <laughs> we'll see about that. <laughs> All right. Maybe someday. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so I have one more question for you, Phil. Okay. And I'm gonna put you on the spot a little bit with this one. Um, so on a couple of occasions, 
I have heard you um, like so beautifully describe um, the multiple, how, like how you've incorporated the multiple pathways into your life in regards mm -hmm. to a tapestry. Yeah. And I would love if you could um, give everybody, you know, that same little mental, um, mental picture. Sure. Uh, that's a, what an interesting question. Right? I thought um, I would like it. I think uh, it was either Bill White or somebody we were talking about. Uh, recovery could be like a stained glass, you know, or with different pieces, or it could be, in my mind, like a tapestry right with woven with different colors and let's say you know i started off in aa with like 10 solid years of you know just in meetings you know five six seven eight nine times a week and let's say that was blue i would have a lot of blue at the base of my tapestry and then i started to incorporate some of the other hobbies like the first time i bought a kayak it was a red kayak so kayaking, I started to develop a red thread. And then I did some surf fishing and with a yellow kayak. So I had some yellow. And then I started to really embrace my spirituality and pursued that. It was almost like either these gold or silver tinsel threads started getting woven and became more and more of my tapestry. And hiking the trail became a uh, uh, you had the green of the deep forest. And then you think about my love for family, my wife, Sandy, and our kids. And is that a brilliant pink or I don't know, but it gets woven through and becomes almost like the heart and center of your tapestry as well with this beautiful gold and silver tinsel in the middle. So sometimes I think like if we all looked at each other's tapestries of life, tapestries of of recovery what would they all look like and wouldn't it be cool if there was like a a workshop where we could all hang our beautiful tapestry of recovery and they would all be different and you know i say 12 steps for me alcoholics it was blue i don't know why i chose blue maybe perry would have chosen bright orange i don't know i have flaming pink crocs on right now so <laughs> I don't see. So there they are. So these are the shoes I wear, you know, in a given day. So I have no idea, but my toes, Steve, are not pedicured. I'm not going to do that. I'm sorry. That's not part of my tapestry. <laughs> um, so that's the way I think about it a lot of times. And when I'm coaching and to tie it back into coaching, I'm trying to discover what's in their tapestry. Uh, Art Woodard, my dear mentor and friend and colleague, he, oh my gosh, I can't even mention his name without choking up, but he, ta he talked about paying attention to what has heart and meaning, not just for, that's not, not, not only for you personally, what has heart and meaning for you, but pay attention to what has heart and meaning to the people you're working with and follow that. And if you're a parent, that's what you do with your children. That's what Sandy and I have always tried to do. What has heart and meaning for our children and coach them to that. Let, let them see that that does too. Because sometimes we're not even aware because it, we just as, assume it's natural, but that's what has heart and meaning. So I don't know if that quite, I went on a little rant there, but I love the rabbit though. trail. I <laughs> I just thought that that was such, you know, for me, it was just such a beautiful picture that you painted. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, simplistically too. So, mm -hmm. um, so thank you for that. Oh, Stacy's going to crochet it or knit it. Oh no. Yes. <laughs> uh -uh. So, um, I would love to just kind of get people a little excited for the conference. Well, now. Can I do one more thing oh, before we do yes, that? Absolutely. I, I, I see that Michael's on the line. Oh, Michael, yes. will you unmute and just share any thoughts? Because I want to hear from my brother, Michael. Are you there? I'm right here. I just had my, to step away right quick. No, I Michael. Oh, I know I have my brother, oh. Michael Serrano, but we also have my brother, Michael Askew, too. He's here. Yes, Michael yes, Askew. Yeah. Oh, 
Jack, look at him. <laughs> what up, brother? <laughs> hey, what's going on, my family? Out here? I love yeah. all you guys. Yeah. Love you, man. Hey, what do you think? So uh, I've been listening. I'm actually um uh trying to find some donations while I listen to this great conversation. <laughs> uh-huh. Uh so, so yeah, I, I really appreciate the opportunity to have found um, multiple pathways of recovery. Uh, when I got out of prison and joined CCAR as a volunteer, and uh, Phil can kind of help me with this. It was a lady from New Haven that was on methadone, and she was on methadone for quite a few years back in 2000. When, oh, yeah, she and her brother, back in 1998. Right? Who was that? She and her brother. I can't remember her name, right? They yeah. Were, they were together. I'll, it'll and come to me. And she was so vibrant in her recovery. And I'm like, and then I, and then I went to church and I found someone that used to run the streets with me. And they were like, this was my recovery. And I'm like, so there's more than 12 step fellowship. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it was amazing how uh, all of a sudden I started uh, learning how people was um, nurtured through their pets and, you know, and now today it's like, we can create our own pathway. Uh, whatever you feel is necessary for you to be able to maintain and sustain. Uh, if it works for you, then then, then work it, you know? Mm -hmm. So thanks for letting me have that moment with you well, guys. Really well, I, I want you to have one more moment too. Talk about your experience with the Multiple Pathways of Recovery Conference and why you think it's valuable. Oh my goodness. Well, you know, <laughs> Ruth Riddick, she's just a, uh, <laughs> I can't follow that act here, but uh, <laughs> You know, what, what I felt was a presence of belonging, uh, regardless of what pathway I belong to. Uh, but in that conference, I, I, I walked away with a sense of pride that people were certainly appreciative of learning new experiences and how to enjoy life through a different pathway that, like you said, Phil, may not have been suited for me but it was working in the lives of thousands of other people. And I just, I just was amazed that there were so many different pathways that people could take, uh, mm -hmm. but that was it, thanks. Thank you. And Michael is our, he and I were co-hosted, I think all of them that we've ha held before, you're being replaced by Miss Maggie Young. So oh, I, just my wanted, goodness. My I just goodness. wanted you to know that. <laughs> yeah, the, the grade eight recipient, that's beautiful. Yeah, that's cool. Thank you, Michael. Love Thank you, brother. You. Miss Love you, you. too. Um, okay, Amy, where are we going next? Yeah, so I just want to, you know, for those of you that haven't attended the conference, and, you know, I just kind of piggybacking on what Michael said, I, I do want to um, just touch base to um, 2019 was the last time we hosted it, and I had just signed on, but that sense of community and that sense of connection um, at this conference is just, you know, by far, probably one of the, the, the biggest takeaways for me. Um, so, you know, just kind of piggybacking on what he was saying, but, you know, the, the, um, the conference itself, um, you know, the idea of it is to kind of bring together all of these, um, you know, people, recovery leaders from all kinds of different backgrounds and pathways and organizations to kind of just share and convene and um, really educate people about these multiple pathways. And we have some really amazing keynote speakers, um, you know, like Phil, Phil is actually one of our keynotes, Phil and Sandy um, Valentine, but we have um, Maggie Young from Liberation Programs. We have Hanair Hernandez, um, we have, yeah, we have um, Neil Campbell. Um, we Georgia have, Council. Yes. And um, we also have Mark Bloodholm. He's going to be there doing, you know, his um, HBL his comedian. Incredible bits. I don't know if anybody has ever seen him live, but we also have a number of amazing workshop presenters as, you know, Miss Ruth Riddick. Thank you so much for joining us today. She's incredible. And she's an amazing NPRC hype woman. I should bring her, <laughs> bring her everywhere with me. But um, we do have the, the full list right on the website, but we have some really exciting things going on some pre-conference activities. Um, Greg Williams is going to be showing his movie, Tipping the Pain Scales. Um, so again, it's just, you know, that sense of community, connection, fellowship, um, 
Florida weather in January. There's mm. that too. So, um, you know, you can head right to seacarconference.org. It's got all of the information um, right on that site for you. The agenda's up. Um, you know, we have, like I said, a list of speakers, the keynotes, everything is there right at your fingertips. Um, and I will also add it to the chat again for you as well. Thank you. And I, I see that we do have a couple, a couple questions that I'm also willing to uh, yeah. dive in a little bit. Uh, Jesse, you, you know, you like to stir the pot, of course, right, Jesse? <laughs> I don't know where you learned that. But so here's the question that Jesse's like asking. He's asking basically about um, oftentimes he gets the most resistance and pushback on the moderation um, on the moderation based pathway. How do you help other recovery community organizations and organizations understand and embrace this pathway? How do we teach supporting that pathway? And you know, I'm also interested in hearing how other people have had that, uh, how they've approached that as well. So um, for us, I think, and I, you know, I don't know if I can teach a whole organization at one time to embrace that pathway, but I might have some influence with a coaching session with an individual, right? So. I would also say, um, you know, embracing that pathway, you really have to go into the organization's values and beliefs, right? So they might inherently believe that moderation doesn't work. It just would never work for anyone, especially that's pursuing a recovery lifestyle. So that might be a tougher nut to crack than say somebody that has had some experience and seen it work in an individual. Like we've seen people moderate, if you want to use that word, where they would come off a hard drug like a heroin, might smoke weed for a while and say, this isn't working, and then might stop weed and might not. But that's not really our call. It's how you work with it. So I would use a, a combination of scenarios and walking people through and see how they would work with that. I would try to understand what their risks are and then what they're really fearful of, and then try to mitigate that somewhat and say, well, what are you really afraid of here? You know, what is, what is the worst case scenario and how we go for that? And again, I'd have to discover and manage my own stuff, right? Because as a coach, I don't wanna try moderation <laughs> now. You know, maybe I could drink uh, uh, Budweiser during this football game. I don't wanna try that. Um, and that's my decision. Uh, so I know moderation wouldn't work for me. At least I'm pretty sure it wouldn't work and I don't want to try it. Um, anybody else have any thoughts about that? How you might approach an RCO or another organization about moderation? Nobody wants to touch that subject. That's a touch one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, Deidre does. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I don't know how to approach it really, but I just have a thought of, I guess I would try to figure out what the reason for the moderation would be um, because a lot of times um, I'm a nurse. So I see sometimes with the patients that I see, um, you know, they'll, they'll want to use medical marijuana or something else. And they're looking for um, kind of main maintaining um, certain behaviors. And I'm just wondering, like, is it a protective mechanism or what exactly are you using the substance for? So I guess that's how I would approach it is just wondering, yeah. like, how is this serving a purpose, really? And I, I think, uh, I, and, and he's not, Jesse's no, known to do this, but it's a loaded question because it almost believes, it tests your fundamental belief as an individual or organization is moderation and a moderation approach, a pathway of recovery or a pathway to recovery mm. and that one little pre preposition is in all about how you personally think about it and i'll be perfectly honest my own stuff says i would support moderation on the pathway to abstinence <laughs> but that might not always be the case that people will do just fine with 
you know, some like Sandy talks about one of her students um, being very active in the Yukon recovery community and smoking marijuana, maybe like uh, once a month and having a mountaintop experience, but being still perfectly saying he's in recovery, declaring he's in recovery. I couldn't do that. All right, Jesse, go ahead. Floor is yours. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, like I said, it, it, it comes up a lot. And, and, right. and a lot of times I, I say to folks, well, we get in, into the, you know, the, the nuances of what substance it is, right? And people want to debate. And I say, well, sometimes I have people drinking, you know, six monster energy drinks a day and going <laughs> yeah, for a pack of cigarettes. And then they tell me they don't believe in moderation-based recovery. And I say, tell me more about that. Right. right. And, it's and I agree, boring. like it, it's to me, the, to me, what I've learned recently, I think is like harm reduction is the big umbrella and like things just kind of fit underneath that. Like, can we improve quality of life in it? And it was loaded because also the other part that the, the part two to that for me was when someone embraces all the pathways, but then they go back to their organization. And like you said, that organization's values don't align with moderation-based recovery or sometimes medication-based recovery as well. And so I, I see a lot of coaches having this, what do you want to say, like this, this conflict of what's presented to them in this great retreat environment, and then going back to work and, and feeling stifled in, in how much they can really feel like they can support someone. So thanks for putting your two cents in out there. I appreciate that. Yeah, thank you. It's a, and it'll be an issue that's not going to go away. It's going to be mm -hmm. something we're all going to wrestle with and figure out and work with. Um, yeah, uh, so the board currently creating their policy surrounding marijuana and recovery. Will that be discussed at the conference? I don't know that we have anything like a specific um, workshop or anything like that. But what a lot of people do with those types of questions, they bring them to the conference and seek out people's opinions. It's called networking and its finest, where they you have the ability to talk a lot of, about a lot of people with a lot of experience that would be, um, uh, you know, a policy around and I think about Jolie, who is our director of administration and leads our human resources and the legalization of marijuana is a human resources nightmare in a lot of ways um, because of what you can do legally as an employer, what you can require, not require. Uh, I guess even one of the major topics is, are you considered under the influence with medical marijuana. And so that's still all to be hashed out and debated. So there is no easy, it's, a, it's like one of these questions that there is no answers. There are no answers, that it's just more will be revealed. And each board of any nonprofit, each staff will have to work with that. It's a work in progress, it really is. You do the best you can with what you have. We're almost at four. To, did that go fast or what? It, it really did. Um, I want to just also um, really quickly, two things, um, mm -hmm. just touch on some of the tracks that we have at the conference. Beautiful. Um, you know, besides the multiple pathways tracks, you can look forward to hearing speakers discuss um, recovery coaching, um, recovery advocacy, self-care, which is a big one. We're partnering um, with the Phoenix this year and doing like a, a ton of self-care um, right incorporated into the conference, which is going to be amazing. Um, and new this year um, is recovery storytelling. And I think that that um, has been an, an incredible um, pathway that, you know, we've been supporting with our um, Pearls Recovery Story Slams. And if you are um, familiar with them, you know, I'll put the link in our website. We do um, those slams monthly. Um, and it's just been an incredible thing to kind of watch. But um, one additional thing I wanted to touch on, on to MPRC is, you know, we have um, 
the conference in Florida, which we were blessed to have in January. And we are also taking it on the road. And we are going to be in Colorado Springs in May of this year um, as well. Next year. So next year, sorry, I'm already there, but <laughs> I'm there already. But um, yeah, so we are also, um, you know, accepting proposals for that too. Um, and it's right on, um, again, I'll put all of this in, in the um, chat, but um, super exciting stuff um, going on for that. And I, you know, um, really looking forward to getting out to that um, side of the country and taking this amazing conference on the road. Um, yeah, Coach Mark, I agree with what you just direct messaged me to. Well said. Um, and all right, so we're at the four o'clock. Again, I thank you for all your participation and listening. I hope it was fruitful for you. I wish you a, a blessed day, blessed week, um, and do what you can to help promote multiple pathways, uh, the multiple pathways of recovery conference. And if you have any questions at all, you can always email me directly, philip with two L's at ccar.us and I'm putting it in the chat. And I don't know why I didn't like, I possibly didn't hit enter and go uh, direct for everyone. There we go. I'm thank you all. As well. <laughs> Take care, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody.